Chapter Twenty One. You. Udana. This is a centre which conveys the automatic commands to operate the chest muscles. That is, it is our breath control centre. Actually, it is the bluish white light which emanates from the pharyngeal plexus. The clairvoyant, as just stated, sees this as a bluish white light. Un mani. This is the stage when we are out of the body. That is, when the astral body is withdrawn from the physical body, such as during astral travel or during a trance. We are said to be in a state of un mani. Upadana. This is the material from which all things are made. Everything is made from a substance corresponding to the state of the thing which is made. A silver pot is made of silver. A glass window is made of glass. A human is made of flesh and bones, and nothing can change the fact that a human is made of flesh and bones. That is the upadana. Upadhi. This is the ignorance which the overself imposes upon the human in the flesh. It would be most unsatisfactory for humans, irrespective of their progress, could remember all their past lives. Those who had been princes would be dissatisfied if they remembered their princely reign when they came back as an impoverished peasant, and the one who had been a peasant would feel a sense of inferiority, possibly when reincarnating as a prince. Thus, it is that before a human soul incarnates, he or she drinks of the water of forgetfulness, before awakening to consciousness in the body of a baby. It is a wise provision that those who are incarnating normally forget, while in the flesh, what they have been in the past, although such knowledge is available to them when they get in the astral world by way of astral travel, so they can consult the akashic record. Sometimes upadi is given an s and becomes upadis, and in that case it refers to the whole man upon the earth and out of the body. It refers to his three bodies, his three basic bodies, which are number one, the casual body, number two, the subtle body, and number three, the gross body. Upaniyana. When a boy is trained to become a monk in the Hindu faith, he takes a sacred thread, a symbolical ceremony during which the boy vows to observe certain virtues, which are number one, absolute purity; number two, absolute truthfulness; number three, absolute self-control and self-restraint. Compared to the Christian belief, it is much the same as being confirmed. Upanishad. There are certain books which constitute the philosophical portion of the Vedas. These sacred scriptures deal with the more mystical matters and the nature of man and man's overself. There are one hundred and eight Upanishads. A hundred and eight is a sacred number in Tibet. The chief ones are number one, Isha, number two, Kina, number three, Katha, number four, Prasna. Number five, Mundaka. Number six, Mandukya. Number seven, Chandogya. Number eight, Brihadaranyaka. Number nine, Etareya. And number ten, Taitariya. The Upanishads brought to a close each of the four Vedas, and so they had at the end of Vedas the word Anta, meaning end, thus becoming Vedanta. Which means the end of the Vedas. Uparati, this is for which we must all strive, the end of all personal desires.